You've got free speech if you're talking face to face with somebody. One of the biggest things in winning a fight is sustainability. So most people don't understand sustainability at all because we're all paycheck to paycheck and week to work and that we just figure that the lights will be on 24 seven. Change happens two ways. You're inspired to change or it hurts so bad that there's nothing that you can do but change. What people don't realize is six billion lives have just been saved and nobody knows who the heroes are. Don't bother trying to wake people up. Wait until you get to something that's relevant to what's actually important to them. You know, it's like otherwise you're just wasting energy. Our potential It's exponential Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another podcast. I have an amazing guest today who really embodies kind of what we talk about here, and I'm excited to get into it. Our whole theme of the show is phasing out the system, empowering yourself, and growing food at home. And my guy, Andrew, today, he's here to talk about just that. Andrew, thank you for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, man. So anyways, let's get into your backstory, kind of how we got here, how we met maybe. Four Freedoms Amazing. That's how we initially yes. met. Yes, we met at mm -hmm. the Fort Freedom House where you were teaching organic gardening. And um, we hit it off. I said, hey, I grew up in Michigan and uh, did a little bit of helper work on an organic farm, a small one, like 21-acre organic vegetable farm, produce farm up in Michigan. And uh, we started having some other conversations. We realized that <laughs> yes. we both have our light bulbs on in our head that... That we kind of asked some deeper questions, we're a little bit more soulful, a little bit more connected, and we hit it off and kept in touch. And then um, I went traveling, and I'm in town for the Veterans Weekend, the yeah, man. fundraiser. Happy Veterans Day, by the way. Thank you, thank you. It was Heck an yeah. honor to serve, and we reconnected and said that uh, we've we've progressed. Yeah. And we need to have a little bit deeper conversation. Yeah. You mentioned you had a podcast. I'm like, all right, and yeah. invited me, and here we here are. we are, and and uh, that's how it works. Yeah, it's beautiful that it that it all worked out, dude. Totally. And I'm excited to have you on because, anyways, you have such interesting information for our audience. It's really good stuff, guys. So be be prepared. So, anyways, let's get into that. Like, where did you travel to, and kind of what have you been up to recently? You've been on this farm in Michigan. So, um. You were saying as far as the travel segment of my life in uh -huh. in late April, early May, I, I had late April I had completed a three month contract making airplane engine parts for a manufacturer, and it's wow, and, and it, it's super expensive in South Florida. It is hard to make ends meet, and mm. um, you know I was a little bit f upset because I realized that the owner of the company was. Basically, he he he's got his third private jet. Mm, you know, I'm I'm barely squeaking by, and the owner of the company's got his third private jet, and I'm just like, "All right, thank you. Uh, my contract's up. I I want to get out of here now." And I even a half step back from that yeah, was, yeah. "Why am I here? Mm. I've just graduated Fort Freedom. I'm ready to travel the world, but I'm not going anywhere." So I meditate, and I'm like, "Why am I here on this 90 day project making airplane engine parts?" And what it what it, the realization was a butterfly needs time for its wings to dry. Like I'd just mm -hmm. come out of the cocoon and I've just gone through this incredible healing process being treated like a professional athlete. Like when we leave the military, it's like we're a piece of trash mm. that's been discarded and then people just step over us. And so, and then finally it took me 11 years to ask for help. I come across some really great people that eventually refer me to Fort Freedom. I get treated like a professional athlete. They're mm. they're caring for my mind, my That's body, beautiful. my soul, my spirit, and you know there's there's at least ten professional providers that you see on a weekly basis. Obviously, we get to see you mm -hmm. in the garden as you come to tend the garden and teach us about organic gardening and sustainability and. Um, so amazing, like a professional athlete, they treat you. Oh, absolutely. Wow, yeah. First class. They really do. Yeah. you you live wow. in a beautiful house in a nice, safe neighborhood and you're treated like, like a superstar or professional athlete wow. for the first time, probably in your life. And one of the things is you realize that you're worthy of good things. 
Wow. Like that's one of the hardest things as a veteran. One, it's hard to ask for help. It's hard to articulate what your issue is. It's hard to drop your ego and say, I'm hurt, whether mm. it's internally or externally or mentally or spiritually or physically. And then to reach out for that help and then articulate what your situation is. So and you can feel you're worthy of it, like you said. Man. Yeah. So, so oh, shout out Fort Freedom, by the way. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Everybody at, at Fort Freedom, uh, myfortfreedom.org, uh, reach yeah. out to them. And uh, so, basically, Amazing. helping veterans that have, have struggled with PTSD. And um, so, definitely a life changing experience. I had, I had a few yeah. different breakthroughs there. And so, you um, transform there. Right. So, I have this contract job. I realized that I needed time for my wings to, to dry. And then finally things fall into alignment where I've got the time and the money to travel. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. Now, um, you know, now we're going to get to the point of my story where uh, I, I want to help others. I'm not just going to mm-hmm. travel. I'm, I'm trying to find the next person I can help. And so when I, I say the next person I can help, I've gotten to meet some whistleblowers and some investigative journalists and some truthers that have uncovered some very interesting things. Wow. Like what? The, the, the Google. Yeah. 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 Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, we'll go there. We'll go there. Okay. (laughs) So to give a little backstory, because I want to give a little bit more context to who I am and where I come from. So, uh, you know, 2000, 2001, I'm a travel agent, I'm a cruise specialist and I'm selling cruise vacations. Life is wonderful. I'm happy where I live. I'm happy where I'm working. I'm married to a beautiful person, you know, and everything's great. And 9-11 happens 10 days later. I'm out of work as a cruise travel specialist. So then fast forward. Uh, 9-11 my fall- 2001. Correct. Yeah. So this was September 21st of 2001 that that happened. So um, Got it. I go back to working in the auto industry is a, basically I've, I've, I'm like a freelancer employee. I would work employed, but I was really <laughs> out for myself to be a freelancer just to learn as much as I could and move on to the next company. I got to do some really great jobs, but the okay. auto industry, when the global financial crisis hits, gets hit hard and Detroit gets hard again. And so, um, you know, it's it, understanding that struggle and, uh, in the middle of that, so 2010, um, I'm going to take a half step back to 2006. I joined the military as a reservist, the United States Navy, as a heavy equipment operator, a heavy equipment operator, a Navy CB. And so I, I go for basic 2006. I go for advanced school, come back 2007, go back to, you know, I'm a reservist and I go back to my working in Detroit as a, basically a laborer or a person doing a job got it and you're in the reserves and i'm in the reserves and then 2010 it's time for us to go on deployment we go to afghanistan um you know wow. get to do construction in afghanistan uh so kandahar Tarankot, um we built an air traffic control tower we expanded bases we built a, a base out on the front lines from the ground up i got to drive the most awesome truck on the planet the oshkosh mtvr <laughs> and you know it's like every kid's <laughs> dreams you know like 30,000 pound cargo truck. And, and you're a car guy? Oh my gosh. Like there's no person on the planet that's customized a truck that, that can beat this. It's it's military grade, unlimited fuel, and you get a mechanic that travels with you. Wow. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So <laughs> You're savage. Oh, it, like it just, it is. You know, I mean, sometimes yeah, if, you, yeah. if you're, if you live outside the totally. box, you just get to do some outside the box awesome things. So mm. um, fast forward to coming home, um, I'm just wanting to live a quiet life and go back to normal. And I had people trying to wake me up. It's like, um, you know, like this guy that lives in the white house might be married to a dude and their kids might not be what you think that they are. And I was like, huh, wasn't ready to receive that truth at that moment. Yeah. You know, and then somebody else <laughs> like, like oh, this dude overseas is paying mm-hmm. protesters in America. And I'm like, not interested. And then somebody else is like, yeah, there's these horrible things that are going on over here. And I'm like, that's gross. Get that out of my face. You know, it's like, so people like are you trying to like ready. For well, it, people right? are, yeah, people are trying to wake me up. So don't bother trying to wake people up. Wait until you get to something that's relevant to what's actually important to them. You know, it's like, mm. otherwise you're just wasting energy. That's true. Right. Bro. Cause people try to inflict their will. And it's yeah, just, no, dude, what, no, how does make, this affect me? Make a friend, <laughs> Interesting. find out what they're excited about <laughs> and ask them a relevant question. Go from there. All right. So, um, 
<laughs> after after thousands of conversations and how to wake people up, I've I've realized that's the 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 ideal formula. So, um, okay, take a deep breath, and <laughs> yeah. I've I've now moved to Florida, 2017, and it's a culture shock because it's incredibly status, incredibly huge facades on people. Mm. How do I make friends and here in um, South Florida? Yeah, eventually I end up. Yeah. Um, working as a rideshare driver and I'm driving around South Florida and the mass mandates start coming out and it's like, okay, but the ones that we are trained in the military that will save our lives. Yeah. Don't do, don't use those. Just use this paper one. Okay. No. And so I started asking questions, a thousand questions. Yeah. So one co- question leads to a thousand questions. And so March, you know, we start getting some lockdowns and then by, October, I meet Zach Voorhees, the Google whistleblower, and he was at a dinner in Fort Lauderdale. And I said, look, you're the number one person fighting against the biggest company on the planet, and you're protecting the First Amendment right to speech. I served eight years in the military trying to protect the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I'm like, wow, like I'm stopping everything I'm doing at this moment. I'm helping you. Wow. And so like I meet Zach and I, I meet two investigative journalists and we start working together as a team. And so now like 24 seven, we're just, we travel as a team. You're working I'm, as a I'm team the driver. With him. They're in with my, him. they're in my ride share and, and we're going <laughs> everywhere. And so trying to set up speaking engagements so for Zach. Trying to like raise awareness. Yes. And so, um, what? we, we set up a lawsuit Okay. We raise one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars in seven days, and it goes. This case goes before a judge who delays thirty, sixty, ninety days. Basically, kicks the can down the road as far as they can, and then says Section two thirty they can do whatever they want. Wow. And it's like, cool. whoa, wait a minute, hold wow. on a second. Wow. I, I, and so yeah. looking back, it's going back to eighteen seventy one, the Organic Act of eighteen seventy one, and it's like, whoa, that's. That's the where the two train tracks. So we had one set of train tracks was was the Constitution, and now we have two sets of train tracks, which is the corporation okay. and the Constitution. So the corporation is over top the Constitution, what? and so nine times out of the ten, we get an unfair situation, and we've been trained into obedience, and we we just get railroaded in, because that's the way it is. That's. But here's the, so my question to you, that's crazy, by the way. Wow. What, what was like he whistleblowing? Like, what was the case? What were they doing? So Zach, um, if you want to check out Zach Voorhees, the, the book is Google Leaks, L-E-A-K-S, Google Leaks. So um, he found the blacklist file back in 2017, 2018, and it's everything that, um, the search engine is hiding from you on that platform and their video platform. So, you know, the, the one with the initials Y and T, because, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit careful how I word some of these things because because we know who these people are. Yeah. There's algorithms that can make me quiet. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's true, bro. But like, I'm willing to talk about it because I think it's important. Yeah. I like who, who like the blacklist, like great. They ban certain things, but like, were there things on there that were like, good for humanity um, like what was the big so yeah i'm, curious. I'm just curious. I'll, I'll just go over what's already been said which was uh the truth about the las vegas shooting there's a lot of names that you can't search there's uh the cures for um a certain wow. disease like six thousand of them Six. and then there's like where if you're a certain citizen from a certain country you can't even look up your own amendments because it's a important issue so so those are just three examples so we've got one that's a false flag we've got one that's a major health related issue and then we've got another one that is a major political issue and so um so that makes me insane crazy bro because I've always had like an inkling about that, like censorship and like yeah, sur- you've, turbid, but like to know it's like a real thing. You've you've is got crazy. free speech if you're talking face to face with somebody. Yeah, and that's and so now once I got, let's say red flagged or let's say I uh-huh. got red lighted, you know, because people are, people don't 
know about social credit score. So over in so a certain about. part of the world, they are obvious about the social credit score. And if you're compliant, you get a green light. If you're disobedient, you get a red light. And so let's say you're using an app in America and you do something that's red light behavior and that's not in compliance to a certain policy. Yeah. And so, you know, let's say one rideshare company realized that I crossed a, a red light thing and now all of a sudden I'm no longer working for that rideshare company. And yeah. it's like, okay, well, it's I'll powerful, switch, to, I'll switch to the other one. So they yeah. talk about, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. they talk about, yeah, software is powerful, bro. These companies. Yeah. yeah one. So, to, so, go ahead. Keep so going. let's get into it because people don't realize you've done all a, a bunch of research I, like on this stuff. Yeah. I, I was basically I, with lockdowns. I had all day and all night to, you know, I'm not <laughs> married. At, I'm not married at this moment. I don't have kids and yeah. I'm out of work and I've, I've got a unlimited curiosity. What I was realizing is websites would disappear. Like you find something good, it was gone the next day. So if you didn't screenshot it because so much information was coming out during that period and right. realizing that it was here today, gone tomorrow. And um, so yeah, it's it was it was really interesting to learn as much as I did. Now going back to Rideshare, um, I found out that out of 2,400 rides I did in a year and a half, I found about 20 or 30 people that knew anything about anything of all the topics. Now my background, my background, one percent. That's one percent. So my backgrounds, travel industry, auto industry, eight years of service in the military, and I've also done short-term mission trips. You know, so I'm not a Bible scholar, but I'm well read. I've read the Bible cover to cover through a devotional study in a year's time. So I've got four different perspectives. So let's say, you know, I'm looking at you and you're looking at me. We have two completely different perspectives. If we put them together, we got a 360 degree view. But if we are looking through a tiny little, mm. you know, just a pinhole, which most of us are approaching life where we don't even realize that we have tiny little pinholes that we're looking through and we don't even mm. see the world as it really is. So let's go, let's go there, dude. Let's go yeah. macro. So okay. what do these so, people not even know? Like, so how studies. Is it? Yeah. So I'm going to give the most simplified version. <laughs> cool. And, and this is, this is the battlefield out there that, uh, going back to 1930, 1940, there is a depopulation movement. And so you and I, uh, talked about the Georgia Guidestones and the number one item on there is reducing the world's population of 500 million people. And to keep it there. Wow. Right. And those are the green light people that are obedient to the, Jeez, that are fully the people, compliant. The sheep, the yeah. Sheep. So me and wow. you and everybody else on this half of the planet, we're all done. We're the first ones. When, that are going and out. so when people, so dude, but that, by the way, the Georgia Guidestones, they don't even exist anymore. You could look it up. Yeah, it got knocked Some, down. Yeah. Someone destroyed. It got it. hit and then it got bulldozed. And there's a whole that we could do a yeah. whole podcast on just that. Yeah, and but, it's, it's out there. If you want that D podcast, it's out there. Someone else did it. The depopulation movement, right? Because someone would say we're kooks, we're quacks, we're out. But like, why? Why is this a real thing? Because they're they're coming for us for two reasons. They <laughs> yeah. don't need us. We're just useless eaters at that point. And then they they know that we're not compliant, so we're a, not not a, whatever, we're not yeah. helpful. So you know the the <laughs> yeah. It's so, as simple as that. Okay. Yeah, it's it's brutally so, it's it's. So why so it's do the they make the simplest math you can do? They they don't need us. So but they've done necessary. such a good job, like convincing everyone that that's not even what they're doing, and it's like kind of in your and I's face when you actually look at it. Well, let's say well, how did let's say we that? talk about the weather. Yeah, it's it's not the heating or the cooling or this or that. It's the carbon that they want to stop is the air that I'm breathing out of my mouth. So going back mm. to the depopulation movement, the carbon adjustment that they want to make is for me to stop breathing. So if we go to um, Henry Kissinger, they they achieved a zero population growth at certain parts of the world at certain times. And so Kissinger in the 70s came out with a document laying out the plan for zero population growth. So they basically were trying to slow the growth down to zero and then they're trying to depopulate it from there. So yeah, this is this is no secret. You can look it up very easily and, yeah, and you can get the PDF on the speech on that. He, yeah, he like talks about this stuff. Who who else? Because that's so tripped out. He's like a high up guy in our government, right? right? 
who worked with alongside all the presidents, I guess, as their like advisors. It's some Game of Thrones shit, dude. <laughs> so, so, anyways, you get, you get into it. Talk, talk about it. Started from 1930, 1940. Yeah. So we, you know, and Was and there the and World and War so II? more more recently, there's been two things, and I won't spell out those two things, but the mm. the the what people don't realize is. Six billion lives have just been saved and nobody knows who the heroes are because the the loudest voice out there on the six different TV channels are going to say that that these are the bad guys and they'll point at a certain country and they'll say they're the bad guys. No, they just saved 600 billion people or six billion people's lives because of going into a certain place and eliminating the threat. And they're labeled as bad. So it's the inversion. What people don't understand but is the trying to throw everybody off. Right. So people don't understand the inversion that, that good is evil and evil is good. And so, you know, if you understand the inversion, you use it as a mirror, then you can kind of decode some of this stuff. So whoever they say is bad may be actually be good. And whoever they say, oh, they're good may actually be bad. So, dude, yeah, you tell my parents this, they're like, Nah. Yeah. You All of a sudden, I mean? you, got, believe, you got you got smoke. Yeah, I had <laughs> but, a conversation you, with my daddy. His smoke came out of his ears a few days later. So, I know. But like, anyways, for the people who are real and hearing this, and I want to just like pick it apart a little more. Yeah. Like, what exactly is happening okay. before we get into solutions? Yeah. Too, so Kissinger. Because, yeah. They were going after three three things, and most simply, food, energy, and money. If you can control food, energy, and money, you can control the people. And most people think that you get your paycheck on Friday and you go to your grocery store and that you load up your cart and then you go home and then you put all your groceries away and then you watch your TV show, you watch your sports, you watch your movie, you live happily ever after, you go back to work, you know, you do your grind, you take, uh -huh. a, you take a vacation, you take some selfies and then you go back to work and you just keep marching around in a circle. And so, but wait a minute, what, so food, energy, and money. So what happens when, like, for example, even in the last week, there were six different banks. So if you go on downdetector.com, you can see what companies are struggling with their technology, their apps or their websites. And so there were like six banks that were struggling to process transactions or logons for people that were trying to get their money to spend their paycheck. And so now, like one of the banks here in South Florida, I noticed six of their branches closed up. And most people don't realize that, okay, so if you go to the bank and it's no longer there, or you go to the bank and it's closed, okay, now we're going to go up to the ATM. Right. Now let's say that ATM shut down. Yeah. And now you got a piece of plastic in your hand and it's like, okay, but that piece of plastic can be turned off. Yeah, the call, and the, call this number. Right. And so, like... <laughs> but yeah, well, so you're saying, yeah, man. So, so you're saying there's gatekeepers to these three things. So these what days. what happens when people have the yeah. realization yeah. At, at any moment, they could turn it off for one mm -hmm. or they could turn it off for all or any number in between. So let's go back to the food. Yeah. So let's say you go to the store and they lock the doors or they just don't supply it. So for my whole life, I've been able to go to the grocery store and just load up a cart. Right. We've never seen, we've never but, experienced But people that. go into a panic over TP, <laughs> you know, toilet paper. And all of a sudden, that. people go into emotional panic buying and clean out the shelves. So you people combine. People were serious about it. Yeah. Like you, you go to the store, they were like bodying you. Right. Like, <laughs> so I was like, what? you combine where you can't get money out of a building and you go to another building where you can't get food out of that building. And then let's say even worse, you know, the, I, I was out in the front lines in Afghanistan for 30 days, didn't have a cell phone, didn't have any electronic devices at all. Like, you know, of course our machines have radios and electronic devices, but I had no electronic devices and I got by, you know? So, but let's say in our modern society, either the network shut down or the power grid shuts down. Yeah. And it's happened in certain places during certain storms or during um, you know, certain network outages. Yeah. But just in little hur but like hurricanes in certain areas, right. you say. Not the whole grid. Right. So let's say 
you've got a freezer full of food or you, let's say you got a refrigerator full of food and now all of a sudden the power's out for three days, will that s- spoil? Do you have a plan for that? Do you have a generator? Do you have... So, so these are things that when you're traveling in the military, you have a food surplus in most cases that will hold you over for a number of days if you get cut off. And then you have whatever fuel reserve that you need for wherever you're going and whatever you're doing. And then, you know, as far as resources. So one of the biggest things in winning a fight is sustainability. So most people don't understand Mm. sustainability at all because we're all paycheck to paycheck and week to work and that we just figure that the lights will be on 24 seven. And they don't realize that if you cut off three different channels of supply, well, what are people going to do? Yeah. And, and so wake up, you know, if, if you haven't woken up yet, yeah, you know, time, the awakening's here and I don't want to ruin what... anybody's day. I want to help you out because what are you going to do if yeah. you have a three day where one of those are out or all three of them are out, or let's say you have a 30 day window or no power, no food, no, yeah. no or money. Or, or, yeah. You, but yeah. you're exactly right because I don't think people understand like, yeah, when these situations, the garbage trucks aren't coming to get your trash, like all those things, like there's other, we there's other things they care mm-hmm. about their little, you know, their little tribe, you right. know? Yeah. Who's, right. who's, who's immune from all of it. I don't know. I just see that as the nature of really government or whatever at the end of the day to keep their power, man, you know, in a lot of ways. Exactly. So, so it's, it's, so once you look at it through that lens and think, okay, maybe they're not, they don't have my best interests, you know, because it's important to feel that pain in order to change. Like I really was like, sure. whoa. So anyway, so I'm glad yeah, we're yeah, going change there. Change happens like, two ways. Yeah. You're inspired to change. Yeah. Or it hurts so bad yeah. that there's nothing that you can do but change. And so, well, hopefully I'm inspiring somebody out there to let's, let's get our, yes. our, our small action steps and let's get our game plan together because when it happens and this could happen in the next year it could happen in the next two years it could happen tomorrow like nothing's guaranteed yeah, facts, people bro. don't realize that you yeah. know like i was saying i was working <laughs> one day and then i'm out of a job you know i'm but at the same time you also have to carry the idea that like hey it we don't know what it is like obviously right yeah like we're not going into fear monger mode we're going no, into we don't we can't predict the future that's the yeah, point we're not going yeah. into fear mode we're going into we have intelligence and intelligent people have a certain amount of surplus for things that just happen yeah there's hurricanes in south florida so a lot of people here are usually prepped for big time three days or seven days <sighs> And, you know, like I've traveled around and looked at some proper setups and I'm like, here's your vulnerability. Here's your vulnerability. And most people, oh, y'all have vulnerabilities, but that leads to something else. We'll talk about that. No, but no, but I love what you're saying. Like inspiring people to make action plans and not feel frozen. Small steps. Small steps. So what are are some of those things? Because like you said, sustainability is a great point. Yeah. Like how can we do more of that? So one of my friends, you know, he put out a plot of land and grew food and started canning. Now, we don't know how much time that we have to prepare. So if if we're going from this moment and we haven't prepared, you know, non-perishable items that will get you through seven to 30 days. And there's, there's a whole bunch of kits out online. If you want to buy a kit, you yeah. can just buy a kit. Or if you want to go to the store and just stock up a little bit, but First thing is just stock up. You can do that with purchasing, obviously. But then let's go a little bit further, obviously, with what you do with organic gardening. Right. Um, you know, no farmers, no food. So, you know, if you're not a it's gardener. It's simple, right? Right, right. Like, if you hey, don't, hey, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you don't plant bring, anything, you'll harvest anything. If public, yeah, it's so simple, right? And if if that's what I was teach you guys at For Freedom, man. Mm. Yeah, like, let's do it, guys. Yeah. And, and you, we were actually eating salads from that garden. Like, I think about how cool would it be to have institutions all over Florida, families all over Florida, eating from their garden. Right. Every season. Right. And then there, there isn't, if you do it right, there's an abundance. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. You're seeing it. You know, you you bought you brought me a bag of abundance from somewhere you just <laughs> gardened. So like, I appreciate. That's from my farm. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah I appreciate yeah. you bringing me some fresh fruit. You know. Of course. Um, okay, so we got. I'm no expert on the food preparation. I will leave that up to you yeah, to help yeah, people yeah. further on. You know, the next thing. But you're a part what, of it, brother. Right. So We're let's all... say the next thing, the power goes out. Well, basics. What what do you need to function if the power goes out? And what is most basic? Is it refrigeration? You know, some people it's air conditioning. Yeah. You know. Um, Free freezer. Freezer is a, is a fish, big one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there are products out there that, you know, maybe you're in an area that was solar, maybe you're in an area that you have propane backup and maybe you have a gas generator. You I'm know. curious about this. I got to ask you this. What do you think about, like, we're so dependent on our cars mm. and our phones. Right. So even if something like that were to happen where it was like worst case, yeah. they turn off all our Teslas and all or whatever phones. You got a you got a Starlink? I don't have a Starlink. I don't have one. I, I think Starlink you can have a cell phone that may survive some of this stuff. Interesting. But okay. you know, if you don't charge it. Yeah. But it's like what does it even matter? You know? So so and we'll get to that in the next part, the answering the next question. I want to move on and to the money. Like, yeah, and cool because yeah, yeah, yeah the me, money I, bit. Let's talk about that and then let's talk about the vision of the future sure. too, man. Sure. So the, the money side of thing, I'm not, you know, the, the most wealthy person we on the planet. I'm not advisors. I'm not giving any advice. <laughs> I'm just saying what I have done. Yes. So what I have done is put aside a small amount of, of earnings into silver. And so one ounce, five ounce, 10 ounce. Um, cool, man. And so, Hard money. So it's silver's in every you can make it into a thousand different things. So it's got a great utilitarian. It's also, there's 10 ways to prove that it's pure or that it's real. So it's, it's hard for the bad guys to mess with. Mm, and so, and then, it's, and then like, it's like, what, like well, what? As far as the, te- like, my favorite's an ice cube. You put an ice cube on a, on a piece of silver and you can watch it melt. Now it'll, if you compare it to other metals, there's mm. one or two metals that are similar, but silver is very unique. Now, the other thing that's cool about silver is once you do get that ice cube on there and it, and it melts through, you pick up a, a five or a 10 ounce piece of silver and feel it. It's, it's thermal dynamic properties are very unique. So the size, the weight, the way it shines, the way it tarnishes, the and then there's other more technical tests that you can do on it, but um, it's the it's the easiest entry into a store of wealth mm. because so, gold's more because well, why not gold it's more expensive it's easy to fake and it's in the buy-in point you know and so um got it i'm how not much is, i'm how not much saying is silver right gold's, now? well and and people don't so people need to know the spot price and then the price that they get it in their hands price and that and there's a spread in there so um i'll where just do you, where do you keep yours so um, I, don't, I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Spot price <laughs> in a in the hidden in a hidden room at a secret location, okay. guarded by somebody twenty four seven. You know, it's like, well, you no, know, but they have like apps the funny, you could store right, it. That's no, what I'm saying. Like, I I encourage people to try to keep it on themselves <laughs> yeah. to a certain extent, or within arm's reach, or within walking distance. But it well, funny funny long story short, you know, when I was traveling, I went to. Uh, 17 states. I went over to England and back and, and I was going through every airport and they were pushing my bag off to the side for further inspection. I'm like, yeah, I know you're going to inspect my bag. They're like, what's in here? And I'm like, 70 ounces of silver. <laughs> Did anybody give you a hard time? No, no. All they right, just want to cool. know what's in there because on the x-ray, it just, just shows aren't. that I got all of this stuff <laughs> wow. and, and you know, it's all stacked up. And, and so they're like, what? Because it shows up unique and they just want to see what it is because I can't really make out for sure they what do. it is and it's it's nothing bad and i'll, I'll literally tell the no. agent i'll tell the agent right there i'm like this is real money mm-hmm. like if we can print paper well you if i print too if, I, if i if i if i print a one on the paper or i print a 100 on the yeah. paper wait a minute like now now they're messing with our imagination Dude. so when we go from um when people are happy with imagination and when they have a stone cold reality wake up, yeah, and they realize, wait a minute, silver has real value, gold has real value, 
And there's other things that people can do. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, even even let's say you go to the ATM and it's run dry. Or, for example, last year I went to the bank teller and I wanted to cash a check. And I said large. And she didn't have 17 $100 bills. She mm. gave me like 14 and then the rest in 50s. And I'm like, what's this? She's like, that's all the 100s I have in my drawer at the moment. Mm. So I like for 1700 bucks, I got to clean out a bank drawer. It was kind of funny on a, on a check for that cash. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So, you so can't I'm saying, try, you I'm can't saying, if, yeah, yeah. if you have the ability to quietly and slowly and carefully take out maybe two to four yeah, weeks man. of currency to have it on hand, is you just start working towards it. You and know? so We're I, so, I, I yeah, yeah, I'd already done that, and you know, it's like, so in any case, you know, like I'm not giving any advice. I'm just saying what I had already done even last year or, or about six months ago, but. Um, you know, just take a deep breath and think this thing through and what would work best for you. So that way, mm-hmm. you know, let's say in a scenario, banks close tomorrow, you know, how go, Yeah. you know, what are you going to do? So, and that's real, dude. And anyways, I also want people to like say, like you start now, it's all good. Like I want to just also bring into the fact that like, we're so sometimes focused on what's missing. Mm. And it could really fuck, like mess us up. Mm-hmm. So it's good to also remember what we do have. Absolutely. Our good health and our safety. And oh, our, absolutely. So, you know, feel well, it's, that. It's interesting that you say that because I real I grew up in a wealthy neighborhood. And I... Where I, at? In Michigan? Up in Michigan. And yeah. I got... I, I played golf. My dad wanted to be a professional golfer. And um, cool. I got to play at some really nice private country clubs and I was a spoiled brat. I didn't know it, but I, mm-hmm. I got called out once or twice and I was like, Oh, that's not yeah. good. So and I was too, I was a little shithead the kid <laughs> with money, you know, right. like, so I didn't know entitled all those things. So I go to a war zone, I come yeah. back and I'm grateful for you paved fought. roads. I'm grateful for paved roads. I'm grateful for long showers because out on the front lines wow. 14 days no shower and i did a volunteer mission so i after 14 days i i got a shower my my unit that i was with 28 days no shower so so you know you Dude, get you respect, get respect respect yeah, bro yeah cuz uh, that that will turn you into a man right, real quick right so Stop then being shit, a shithead on a golf course so then i come <laughs> back home yeah and man. i'm at the country club i'm working at the country club that i grew up playing golf at competitively in high school for free because i'm on the golf team and i had the realization that wealth has zero you know connection to dollars and cents and what you got in your spreadsheet mm-hmm. and what you got in your bank account or what you got in your pocket Talk about wealth that. yeah is gratitude for the blessings that are in your life. And that's how I shifted to this is how I measure abundance or or wealth is wow. I am so thankful for the first drop that goes in my cup. So if I have a cup of water, the first drop that goes in, I'm thankful for. And then I allow it fill up and, and overflow. So when you talk about abundance, we're thankful for the first the first fruit that comes off of that mm. plant or the first vegetable that comes off that plant. Facts. So when we're thankful for that very small piece, that's the first one to come up, that's where our wealth begins. And so that mind shift, I went from being completely spoiled to like having some sincere gratitude for, yeah. for things that people take for granted in Afghanistan, traveling down a freeway at, you know, there's not a freeway. There's a road. And that road was a couple miles long. And that's the only road in the whole country. And and so we go 60 miles in three days. So that's 20 miles a day. We, 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 um, walking. No, this is driving in vehicles. Their train was that bad going gotcha. around a mountain range. Gotcha. There's, there's no road. Like we're, we're figuring out a, a way. Yeah. Because we're going out to the front lines where there is no base. And so when I get back in the desert, yeah, I come back to Michigan and I'm driving 60, 70 miles an hour on the freeway and I'm just like, 
woohoo, you know, like you could, you could <laughs> 70 miles oh in an goodness. hour yeah. versus 70, 60 miles in three days. Dude, yeah. And, and your so, point is amazing, bro. Exactly. Yeah, the Gratitude. perspective. Dude. So, so when we gain, like we were saying earlier, we gain the perspective yeah. of the opposite perspective, then we see things completely differently and, um, it would yeah. change your life. Brother. Absolutely. Good stuff. Absolutely. Dude, is there anything else we could get into? How yeah. Uh, so there's one. How much time do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got a here. short one. If we want to add this in there, is understand in the depopulation movement, people are disposable. You can delete them, you can cancel them, you can unfriend them, you can unfollow mm. them, and you can block them. Sure. But when the stuff hits the fan, it's just you and the people that live on the other side of you. So mm. if you've treated your neighbor like a piece of trash, you may want to say, hey, you know, I, I've not been a good neighbor. I've not been a good friend to Here's you. Here's some bananas. You, well, right. So like <laughs> dude, you may realize. You can't unfriend them. That's what you're saying. Well, you, you may want to build some bridges with people right around you because we're going to go from a global society real fast. If all three of those switches get food, energy, and money all get flipped real fast and we have none of that for the next three to 30 days, you're going to need people in your neighborhood to, to look out for one another. And so even if you just want to borrow something small yeah, or you just want to share something small. So and I want to go back to that. Dude. So, so Neighbors we're going to go so from <laughs> yeah global <laughs> to local and yeah. you know, um, how, are we going to understand that we're going to go from a codependent society or a, or a slave society to a interdependent where it's mutually beneficial, where you care about your neighbors and their symbiotic relationships and everybody lifts up the community by finding the weakest person in that community and lifting them up. Wow. Yeah. So, so that, so when we get a vision of heaven on earth, Yes. And the, and how I came to this understanding was when we were locked down, it was like being a school child being told to sit down, be quiet, and not ask any questions. Dude, my but, least favorite thing to do. Right. right. And so it's like you're given a puzzle piece in your hand that's gray side up. And I'm like the curious kid that flips it over and says, oh, mine's got color. On it. Does yours have color on it? Does yours have? And all of a sudden the class is out of control because now you have... This kid that's going excited and he's getting all these other kids excited. And then you find an edge piece, a corner piece. Then you find connection. Once you find two puzzle pieces that connect together and you have that, that epiphany or that awakening moment, then once we get this puzzle together enough that we start to see heaven on earth, and once we stand in the truth and the light and in peace and in harmony and with our arms locked together, we're unstoppable. And so when people catch that vision, yes, we, we will. So, so we, what is happening is, this is so good. The, the impurities are coming to the surface and they're going to get wiped off. So like heating silver, if you heat silver, it'll turn into liquid. The impurities will come to the top and then you wipe, wipe the dross off and then you've got a pure society. And uh, so purity. going forward, we're going to have this society that has more of a pure heart that has a better vision of tomorrow and um so i'm extremely optimistic of course everybody's like oh the yeah. sky is falling the world's ending and this is this is terrible <laughs> right. yeah it may be the end of evil but i do believe that we're coming into a thousand years of peace and so um that's that's the energy that i'm bringing i mean that's what i've read you know i <laughs> you, you turn to the the last chapter of the good book and it kind of starts out with an angel that's going to apprehend a bad guy and lock him up for a thousand years and there's not many people that are talking about that message but um are we at that part of the timeline yet right you know but let's be optimistic i mean let's let's, let's at be least, optimistic let's at least talk to people with some respect and realize that they add value to our life and facts and we add value to their life we all have a puzzle piece to contribute yeah. beautiful man yeah. we do we're all souls yeah and and let's if people if people are getting overly emotional there's a hack for that so let's say you're getting overly emotional good or bad okay do a simple math problem <laughs> four four plus five equals nine 
Yeah. You know, get over to the I logical side, but like stay. <laughs> That's stay, like the nerdiest stay, solution. Yeah, ever. stay grounded on truth. Like that is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Is we want to keep our eyes on the vision for heaven on earth, but we want to stay grounded on truth, and then we want to take small action steps that makes a local impact to, you know, benefit our how we're going to look out for our neighbors and ourselves. So beautiful, man. Well, thank you, Andrew. My pleasure. Let's build it, baby. Heck yeah. Yes. We're in the garden. It's existential.